Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat, and today's video is actually the first of a sequence where we're going to answer questions about the Prototrack RMX. We've been getting a lot of inquiries from current Prototrack users that want to know what all the hubbub's about. What makes the RX different, better, faster than the current control that you're using? So if this is your first time seeing it, then I definitely am going to give you a quick once over on how some of the things work. And we're going to follow this up with some other videos that are going to show you a little bit better detail how each of these things work. Okay. So uh, before we get started, I do want to mention the fact that uh, as I move around in here, this is a touch screen. So you're going to see that everything is manipulated by my hands and I don't have to push as many buttons and hard buttons as I did in the other controls. So why don't we get started? Here I am at the very first screen when you turn on the control. And normally here on your other models, you would just push check system and get into what you want to do right away. In this case, before I do that, I want to show you that we have a new button on the RX that says watch me. And what's underneath there are some videos that'll show you how to use the control, how to get your way around there, how to learn certain things. So you can get up and get running with it right away before anybody even shows up to start showing you how to use it. It also comes with a set of headphones so that you can hear me talking in the background and teaching you how to use it. And when you're done with it, just simply push return and get out. Okay, so I'm going to hit the check system and show you what's different. So first of all, on the right hand side of the screen, you should already be familiar. This is your mode screen and it has all your different modes of operation. The one thing that's missing is the actual mode button itself. We no longer have to push mode when we want to move from one mode to another. So I don't have to go from DRO, hit the mode screen, go to program, hit the mode screen, go to setup. Now I just switch from one mode to the next and they all are open at the same time. They will also come back to right where you were when you left them, which works a lot better because I don't have to search to get back to a certain point. Okay. Other than that, it's going to be pretty similar. Yes, there are some new events and things like that that are in there that the older models don't have, but the way you get around it is pretty similar. Okay, I'll cover that in more detail on another one of the episodes. Um, on the left hand side is what I really want to talk about right here. This is the information panel and this is new and we have different functions in here for how you're going to use the control and I'm going to start out with the status button. So each of these is a fly out window. So no matter what mode I'm in, this is going to fly out over the top. In the status mode, you'll see that it tells me whether I'm working in inches or metric. It'll tell me whether I'm working in two axis or three axis, what my program number is, what options I have, whether they're turned on or turned off, um, what software I'm running, things like that. Okay, when I'm done with any of these, I just push the button again and they go away. The next one is the tool table. The tool table allows me to have tools that are set up with the new tool setter that comes along with the control. And now I can have all my offsets and everything preset in here for the tools that I run all the time. So each time I make a program, I don't have to set up my tools for that program. I can simply bring in my program and then transfer the tools from the library into the program, set my Z0 and be up and running, okay? Um, next button down is one of the big ones. It's the EPA. It stands for Enhanced Prototrack Assistance. And basically what it is is an entire manual on how to use the machine and also how to teach you do some things that are in machining that maybe don't have to do with just our machine, but in general, machining practices, things like that. So whenever I get stuck and I need to learn something, you're going to see when I push EPA, it's going to come up with subjects that pertain to whatever part of the control I was in before I came here. So if I'm in the DRO, it's going to teach me about things that have to do with the manual functions. If I'm in program, it's going to come up with things about the events, or if I'm in a pocket, it'll say these are the types of pockets, here's how you manipulate them, so on and so forth, okay? The next button down is math help. This really isn't any different than what you've seen in the past with our other controls. It'll help you find intersections and tangency points and points on arcs and things like that. And it does have the ability to transfer those solutions into the program. The next button you see says defaults. This is also a big one with the RX. The defaults allows me to set up the way that I like to machine. So you'll see everything in here from whether I want to work in surface footage and uh, inches per tooth to RPM and inches per minute, um, whether I want to have certain types of pec cycles with my drilling, what my, I want my step overs to be in my pockets, um, what kind of a tool path I actually want to use. So everything in here for the way I like to machine can be set up whether my tool is normally offset to the left or the right, something like that. 
as I fill all this information in, what happens when I go to the program mode is it's automatically gonna put in the answers that I have in my defaults. So like if I get to tool offset and I have my default set at tool left, it's automatically gonna go to tool left. I will still have the ability to change it through the options button when I get to that point for that specific event. But for the most part, it's gonna set up for the way I like to machine most of the time. So that's a big shortcut. The next one is the keyboard. This is great. This is something people have been asking for forever. Give me a keyboard that I can use. I don't have to plug one in. You'll see that I can move the keyboard around just by touching the top bar. And I can also expand it to include numbers and symbols just by touching that one button here, right? So as I punch in whatever it is that I need to tell it, whether it's a program part number or something I'm gonna engrave, when I'm done, I also have an ink set and an ab set button where I can enter them into the program. And simply when I'm done, just push the X and it'll go away. The other big one is the calculator. If you're a good prototrack operator, you probably have either glue or a piece of double-sided tape holding a calculator of some sort somewhere on the arm of your prototrack. If I've seen one, I've seen a thousand. And the reason for that is because a lot of times I don't want to stop what I'm doing to go figure out an equation. Well, now that I've got a calculator, I also have the ability to tap the calculator and expand it into a scientific calculator for all my trig functions and things like that. Notice at the bottom it has an ink set and an ab set button. So once I calculate what it is I need to know in my program, I can enter it to that specific point and move on. Again, it moves over like the other one does, and when I'm done with it, just hit the X and it goes away as well. So in our next video, we're gonna talk about the gestures and how you move around in the control and how you uh, set everything up for the way that you're gonna do things. And I'm gonna give you a big hint on how this next one works. If you own a cell phone, then you already know how to use most of it. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat here with some of my best guys from the assembly department, reminding you that if you like these videos, don't forget to push the like button. If you wanna subscribe so that we have a better idea who's watching us, hit the subscribe button over here. And of course, if you wanna see the next video, then slam this one over here. And as always, I hope you enjoy the video. And most importantly, don't forget, keep on tracking.